name is Ruby525 and welcome to a build tutorial video. I know this isn't like what I usually post, but I'm excited to do this with you guys today. So today we're going to be building a survival easily house and it's going to have everything you need for a survival world. Now this is my first time doing it, so hang in, hang in there with me a little bit while I kind of figure out what I'm doing. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here's the block palette that's going to be used and here are all of the materials you're going to need. Now some of them are optional, um, like some of the floors are interchangeable that I chose and like some of the other decorations are definitely not required. If you just want to do the shell, that's fine too. I'll have a few diagrams to help you guys figure out where to put stuff. Uh, but for now, this is everything that I used in this build. I'm going to be narrating kind of on and off throughout the whole thing. Obviously you can pause and take a break to catch up whenever you need to. I'm excited. I'm hoping to do quite a few of these in the future. Now that we know what materials we need, let's get to the build. Here is a basic outline of how you're going to lay down the beginnings of the build. You're going to have seven by seven mud brick blocks on both sides with eight spruce planks in the middle and 11 spruce planks on the side for the middle uh, rectangle. All of the little squares represent spruce logs, and those are just going to be support posts that are going to kind of make the build a little more sprucier. <laughs> so we're going to start off by building five up in the middle and four up on the mud brick sides. And that's going to count for both the regular blocks and the spruce logs. I did not plan out this build beforehand, so as we're building it in video, you'll see I kind of changed some of the things, but most of what you'll see is accurate to what I did. So you'll see I moved the posts, but your posts should already be in the correct place. Uh, my windows, you'll see where they're placed. You can do the same thing. Otherwise, feel free to put them wherever you want. So building things up, I had the mud brick walls one block shorter than the middle portion of the house. So my windows on the sides are three blocks wide by two blocks up and then another middle block up in the middle. And this is supposed to line up with a piece that juts out in the roof much later on. Next, I built up the spruce to form a staircase, just like a normal triangular roof that you would put on a house. This uh, was not too hard. I mean, it's pretty easy and creative and survival just takes a little bit more doing. I did the understair technique on the little jut out. It jut out one block forward from the rest of the house. And then you just want to start building your deep slate tiled stairs over uh, the side portions of the house and then on the back. I put a large window in the middle of the spruce planks, but that is purely just optional. I had quite a bit of trouble with the roof when I did it, but just make sure when you guys do it that your last deep slate tile stair should rest on the furthest out piece of spruce log on the front and back, and then your second to last stair should rest on the second spruce log. That will should kind of give you guys a guidelines as to where you need to be. And then once you finish the rest of the roof, you're done, mostly done with the outside of the house. From here, you're going to want to go two blocks up from the furthest top point of the windows and you're going to want to make a hole and you're going to do on either side of that hole, two blocks up mud bricks. And then you're just going to do a little bit of a roof that juts out once and connects to the roof on the back end. And you'll want to repeat that on both sides. It just kind of gives the roof a little bit more body and keeps it from becoming flat. Fill in all the window panes and where that line of spruce logs is in the center of the house, you're going to want to replace that with spruce trap doors. And then you're going to go around and at every window in the house, you're going to place grass and trap doors. And then you're going to want to obviously fill those in with your choice of flowers. With the outside mostly finished, we are going to head inside and begin decorating. 
So you're going to clear out all your floors. You obviously have three rooms and we're going to have an upstairs loft. I used note blocks for my flooring because I was using a texture pack called Stay True, but those are also, I know, expensive and kind of annoying. So instead, you can also just use the whole floor as stripped spruce logs. Um, otherwise, I just did a pathway with them. Uh, you have a couple floor options. You can do the strip spruce logs. I like having patterns in my floors, so I did the strip spruce logs with stripped oak logs in both rooms, and it really kind of helped break up the brown tones. The deep slate slabs need to be replaced with mud brick slabs. Obviously these are interchangeable, but that is what I chose and I thought it looked nice. All of your doorways want to be framed with spruce stairs and trap doors. For the chest room, we want a mixture of cute but easy to use and hold items in. So for this, we are going to put barrels and furnaces. The furnaces are actually going to go in the wall, but they will be hidden on the outside with bushes later. You can put more storage things above the furnaces, but I opted to just put lanterns and uh, just a few decorative things because I thought they looked nicer. Um, each side is going to have six chests and one barrel on either side, and then you want to put the mixture of moss and green carpet on the floor with a crafting table in the middle to kind of center it all off. Now, I love bells. I was going to put three bells, uh, but you know, I, sticking with one is fine too. And then you can just frame that with dark oak trap doors and flower pots with like flowers. We are going to move our way over to the kitchen, which might be a little hard to follow, but hopefully you guys will be able to figure it out with using a mixture of string and carpet is how we're going to keep up a bunch of the countertops. So for the little jut out countertop, I ended up using string and dark green carpet along with a trapdoor on the end to make it look like it's being supported. And then ignore the two furnaces used. I knocked it down to one a little bit further on. You're going to want to st stack the two smokers. I used item frames to put meat on the counter. And then I obviously made the very cliche and well used fridge that everyone does. And then using hoppers is how I did the oven hood. For the main area, I'm just going to do a little mixture of decorations, but feel free to put more storage out here. Uh, the stairs are made out of mud brick stairs, and they are going to go two up until you get to the landing, which then it is only going to turn to a one. So you're going to go up by one, two, three, four stairs, you're going to do a landing, and then you're going to have a one stair block to lead you to the upper floor. It's a little wonky, but it works just fine enough. And then underneath the stairs, we are going to do a little cat area. This can easily be converted into a dog area or extra storage. I used scaffolding, a cauldron with water in it, some more carpet, and then my invisible item frames, which had fish in them. The next few pieces of decoration will go fairly quickly. In the opposite corner of the cat area, you're just going to put some dark oak trap doors with some plants, your choice, flower pots, And then on the opposite corner of that, to the left and right of the door, is going to be bookcases decorated with more flower pots and candles. These are just to fill up the space. I personally love the books. And I also put in a few looms to kind of make it look like empty bookshelves. And now we've made it to the upstairs. I knocked down both of the walls into the other areas and added proper openings with the same... Uh, manner of framing that we use downstairs. In one of the rooms, you're going to put an enchanting area with bookshelves placed however you'd like and an enchanter in the middle. I also decorated with looms on either side of the door. I also put a barrel with a chain on top and used my item frames to identify them as lapis and enchanted books. The room was also decorated with candles, carpet, amethyst crystals, and more flower pots. It's one of my favorite rooms in the entire house. I think it's very pretty and I really enjoyed making it. 
In the opposite room is going to be an armor area, extra storage, a spare bed, and just some fun little decorations. Uh, this is a bunk bed with one bed on top and then a lectern and a beehive on the bottom. They're framed using signs and trap doors and then there's a barrel beside the bed on the top with ladders. And then place, you know, just little decorations, put a lantern, and then for the grass that is sticking out on either side of the wall, I just use trap doors to cover that up. Now then this wardrobe, at first I put doors on the front, I end up taking those away in a few moments. You're gonna wanna put an armor stand and two chests stacked on top of each other in there. And there's your spare bedroom. I put a little side table and I just added some dried coral to it, but obviously this is just optional. Opposite of the stairs is where we are going to have the beds for the main bedroom. You're going to do two dark oak trapdoors directly behind the beds with mud brick blocks beneath them. On either side of the beds beside the wall you're going to have a barrel that is facing upwards. And then from there you just have to build out one with a upside down spruce stair. Uh, decorate this with some optional carpet on top. I clearly love the green vibe. I feel like it goes with this house very much, but feel free to do what you want. Uh, at first I put lamp, uh, lamps in right here, but then in a few moments I replaced them with pots and azalea bushes with azalea leaves on top to make them look like big bushes. Now for our final decorations of the upstairs, we're going to just put in railing on the stairs. I did this by putting a trap door and then framing them with the stairs. The trap door still enabled me to be able to walk up and down the stairs with no issues. Throughout the whole house, I have torches with item frames and stone slabs. I have an invisible item frame pack uh, and I just think it looks really nice. And then opposite of where you walk up from the stairs, we just put a little side table with some picture frames. Here is a final tour of the inside of the house. Don't go quite yet though, because we have a little bit to be done outside. On both the front and the back of the house, we're going to do pathways with a mixture of coarse dirt, rooted dirt, podzol, and dripstone blocks. Uh, obviously, you can just do the coarse dirt and the rooted dirt, or the coarse dirt and the podzol, but I like, I really like the mixture. And in the back of the house, you're going to do the pathway to a little area, it, make it kind of oval shaped. And this is where we're going to put the blacksmithing table, the stone grinder, and the anvils. You're not going to see me do it on recording, but on each side of the house, make sure you put in some azalea leaves to cover up the furnaces. The shape here is pretty customizable. You're going to want to use four uh, deep slate walls with three spruce fences stacked on top. From there, you cover the whole thing with campfires and make sure you put them out. Now, we're going to replace a few of these campfires in a minute, so you may not have enough to cover the whole thing, but that's totally okay. After putting out all the campfires, you're going to litter on their azalea leaves, both flowering and not, and spruce trap doors. This just gives a little variation to it, makes it look a little more natural, maybe a little overgrown. And then from here, we're going to put in a stair, your choice what type, a mixture of gravel and stone on the floor with a blacksmithing table in front of the stone grinder. And then to the left of the stairs, we're going to put one trapdoor and two anvils, and then put a little campfire with some seating. Optionally, you can litter around some stone buttons to give it a little more realism, but other than that, that's it. Congratulations, you have finished this house. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think, if this was easy to follow, and if you'd like to see more, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you know when I upload next, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!